KKHT wants you to meet three of the classiest guys in real estate. I am Chris Kelso, the maestro of mortgage. I am Rob Cook, the godfather of real estate. And I am Joe Orsak, the king of credit swing. And together, we're the, the real, real estate, estate Rat Pack. Pack. Much like us, real estate right now is smoking hot. So whether it's buying, selling, or owning, you need to check out the Real Estate Rat Pack. They're here to take your calls and answer your questions live. Call now, one 800 808 548 and now the real estate rat pack uh, every week, every every week. Every week our guests have that same reaction it's like what did i get myself into it's, yeah. Either, yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's either that or we're gonna sing all about that bass next yeah, time it's yeah. all about that bass. well uh, <laughs> talk a little bit we actually uh, i say we mc the host we were invited to mc but uh, chris kessel did all the work talk a little bit about i, uh, I didn't mean to take over did. guys you guys did a great job there you supported yeah, I, me I, you were I, there the whole time by and watch you work yeah it was yes. awesome if you know we, we keep it up the uh, the uh, producer's gonna be singing it's all about that mace <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that is true right <laughs> no you know i want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to the to the Teresa kennedy group out there yeah you know we did a really really yeah. good uh yeah <laughs> A really good ice skating event out there for as a as a uh, as an event that we did for the Aero Foundation, and you can go check them out actually at the Aero Foundation. And um, it was it was really good. Brought in families, brought in business partners. We skated, we raised money, we had a good time. We got to see a lot of skaters around Houston perform for us. Some pretty talented skaters, too. very talented skaters out there. And more importantly, we just had a very good time and gave a gave gave a reward system back to uh, you know the community for everything that they do for us. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a great time. Well, I'm pretty excited about the show today. I've been wanting to do this show for two years now. We have never done a show about commercial real estate. We it, have it not done one. It is a huge piece of our economy here in Houston. And my dear friend, and I don't get C often enough, is Scott Covington with SE Covington Company. And welcome to the show, Scott. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and you've got a wide background. Talk about um, how you got in the business, how you started what you were doing and, and what do you do and, again? And, 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 yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we're not we're not sure. Uh, after we got here, we're really not what, sure. What, what do you tell Stacy that you do every day? <laughs> well, it's it's uh, been a great career. We just finished our thirtieth year here in Houston in the commercial real estate. Wow. You started when you were five. Yeah, <laughs> made six six. But it's been a uh, a great career. Uh, we primarily have done office leasing, tenant representation, acquisition, disposition. And uh, Houston is on fire, as you know. As uh, you can remember in the mid '70s when you were here, and all the different license plates from all over the country. Well, if you drive anywhere now, you see traffic, and you see every plate. In, in the, the and, and right there's now, traffic the, in Houston. Yes. yes. Well, yes. you have to avoid it, but it is occasionally. Yes. <laughs> and, and that's one of the things that you're seeing so much activity out there is we have to meet the demand of all the new businesses coming in. I've, I know there's some statistics out here, and I think Mario may have some later on for us as to how many jobs are being created. On a, on a you know monthly uh, annual basis, but uh, what what are you seeing as far as occupancy thing like that? Because we judge a lot. I remember being a, starting a commercial that we talked a lot about occupancy. Like, what's our downtown occupancy? It's just kind of a you don't. You know, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of stats and figures, but just in your uh, Class A buildings downtown, there are 32 properties, about 27 million square feet, and they're about eight and a half percent vacant. And wow. for all practical reasons, when a building gets to be 95 percent occupied. It's considered full because they're constantly uh, taking spaces apart, putting them back together. So uh, typically at 95%, you've got little nooks and crannies that haven't been leased or can't be leased. So um, it, it's amazing. The the average uh, price downtown, if you average all these, somewhere around 42 to $50 oh a my. foot. Oh, my. Wow. Per square I, foot I, on an I annual basis. I remember half that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and they were making, wow. you know, like, uh, back in the 80s, you get a, like one year free and not, I have to pay for a year, or they'll space it out that you get equal to a year, and so that's Absolutely. all gone. It's, you know, and, that, and that's just downtown. Where are you seeing a lot of the growth happening right now in regards to new lease space? Well, you can you can uh, look at uh, one firm downtown is building a brand new uh, tower. Uh, it's Heinz, and for example, this is the first tower they've ever built, completely spec, where they're coming out of the ground. They don't have a major lead tenant. So that's pretty bullish on uh, on yeah, the market, and, and I wow. would imagine the lender that had to be pretty confident that that uh, it's going to get full because I know lenders are uh, by nature, and we do have uh, uh, Craig Brothers here later on who's going to talk about commercial lending, but they're typically very conservative and they want to see a certain percentage of occupancy. Of course, you know, with a name like Gerald Hines behind it, they're probably a little more confident than 
if it was, you know, Rob Cook. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Rob. I've known you a long time. You know, know maybe uh, maybe you should try that. No, I'm thinking uh, I'll leave that to the big boys. So, you know, uh, I, I want to buy a building. <laughs> well, I buy, I, I, I How buy. much are those running lately? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're record prices. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're record prices in Houston, Texas. Are, have you been involved with some – I know primarily you, go, you start as a leasing firm, but I don't you do some uh, sale transaction. What kind of prices are you seeing them on like a well, like Class A building? You can stuff? see uh, upwards of 400 plus a foot. It's, it's amazing. And, and the dirt prices. Uh, like in the Galleria, it, I mean, it's just astounding. What gives that, a threat of number? Oh, there. I don't know, two hundred, three hundred dollars a foot. Oh my! For for dirt, it's wow. uh, you and to That's think about how dirt. how high you have to go to make that pay off. You see the big apartments, you know, the wrap projects that are going up. We don't do any multifamily, but it's amazing to see these go up in in the Galleria the, and all well, the and, and of course, they're it's finally they're actually raising old buildings so they can put up new. Buildings. Absolutely, they see a lot of assemblage where they're taking. Quietly go there and buying up tracks and then build something in the sound. Because we were, uh, Chris and I were going down Post Oak uh, Boulevard yesterday, and, yes. and he hadn't been down there a long time. There's, of course, there's like four, four or five towers. Some of it's residential. Right. You know, uh, so it, uh, it's really interesting to see how they assemble those tracks, and they and all of a sudden buildings are coming out of the ground. Well, it's amazing to see that, uh, well, just for example, in the Galleria, uh, and we'll just talk about Class A's, but you have about 26 properties, about 12 million square feet total, and they're about, they're less than 8% vacant. So uh, wow. you can you can understand when a tenant comes up to renew, we see tenants coming up and they're getting uh, big bumps, 20, 25% increases in their rent, and they're kind of shock to say well wait a minute i've been here 25 years you know uh, and we thank you for that by the yeah. way we, we yeah. appreciate you being here for 25 years where's my discount for being here in this building 25 years and uh, well there are certain savings by main uh you know maintaining a tenant because you don't have the cost of you know rehabilitating the space and moving a new tenant in but still uh, they know they can get it they they know that uh they can get it in years Wind ago up. when there was a little more vacancy you know if you were representing a tenant they would say well Tell the landlord, we're not going to pay that. We're going to go across the street. You know, we'll move. Well, it's not as many options to move now. It's. Um, are, are you finding some of the tenants who may have wanted to be in the Galleria now say, you know what, I'm okay with being a little bit further west or further east or something like that? Well, what, what you see in many of these markets is you'll see a tenant in an A building say, you know, I'm going to go to a B building. I'm going to move to a B building, and and uh, I'll pay basically the same rent, but I'll I'll yeah. step down and from and an for A those listening, by the way, explain a little bit about the difference between an A building and a B building. Yeah, what defines that? Well, it's it's somewhat subjective, but uh, most of the commercial real estate brokers use a service called CoStar, and uh, the age of the building, the location of the building, the amenities of the building, uh, but primarily the the larger buildings uh, in the great locations of the Class A's. And we won't give you any particulars, right. but uh, they can be the same age. Maybe they weren't as large or maintained quite as well, or they might not have a bank or something in the lobby, for example. Okay. But uh, you will see, for example, in the Galleria, when things get tight like this, people do sometimes move out of the A's, go into the B's. Well, the B's are many times the ones that profit more than the A's yeah. because they, they, Their basis is they're filling too. up. Yeah. That's right. They're filling up, and they're bumping just below the A price. So it's an interesting. Uh, then you got and then you got a situation like Chris is in. He's he's on those buildings at the Wells, uh, uh, Sam Houston Tollway and I ten, and they're going to raise those completely. Absolutely. And yep. so he, you're leaving him kind of homeless. Yes, we and know. The, one if of you things... only had a good tenant rep that could help you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, location. one of the things that we tell everybody. You know, you, you made mention the gallery. I mean, if you now go to the area of, of uh, Memorial City, all those new buildings that are going up. You have what's going on right now over in the city center. You can start going out west. And everything that's going on from the uh, energy corridor all the way out to the new Mason Park, I mean, a lot of stuff is coming online right Absolutely. now. I mean, we have a lot, but a lot more still to come still. Here's just a kind of an interesting uh, stat for you. In the Galleria Class B buildings, there are 14 properties, about one three-quarter, one 700,000 square feet. It's about 200,000 vacant, and there are 85 spaces. Oh, wow. 85 spaces, and that might be a 1,000-square-foot space. It might be a 10,000-square-foot space. But Class B, Galleria, huge business district, 85 spaces. Now, who, do you, who do you see coming in? Is it just all oil companies? Is it oh, mixed? Oh, no. It's, it's, a, it's a mixture um, f- 
from soup to nuts. It really is. I mean, yes, we're still the all capital it's an expensive and, soup and, square foot. <laughs> the soup square foot. That's the one we're looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are all those nuts going? <laughs> that's right. They get into real estate <laughs> because it's easy, right? Commercial real estate. Yeah, it's easy. Uh, we send them to the West Coast. <laughs> and now, and I don't, I don't know if you can talk about. It. I know you're working Sorry, on a project out in the north part of town, and, we're, and if you're free to talk about, it, I'd like to know uh, what it is, where it is. Well, we're representing a, a seller that has uh, about sixty-five acres uh, on I-45 across from the Exxon new campus. And uh, as we all know, it's another world going on out in the woodlands. Mario will talk about that in a little bit. But it's a city being built out there, and we're seeing people from all over the country, I guess vendors, if you would, that want to be close to, to Exxon. But, but, make perfect but, sense, but yeah. you're seeing a, a, a new city being built. And obviously the woodlands, Howard Hughes that owns the woodlands, is doing very, very well. But it's um, it's unbelievable to see what's going on. I, I think that you're going to see traffic Right there on 45, where the Grand Parkway and the Hardy come in, look very similar to the Galleria between 59 and I-10. Yeah, and we actually drove by the, where the Grand Parkway is coming in. It, it's going to make a huge difference to that area. Absolutely. You know, the mobility and things like that. Even though it's a toll road, I think, you know, <laughs> if, if it wasn't a toll road, it wouldn't get, have gotten built. Right. And then we're real clear on because we've had a lot of discussions on this show about toll roads, and we have some mixed feelings out there, but I think it's going to be a great economic boom. And, it, and you have to relieve that uh, congestion. There's so much congestion from cars right now uh i don't know where we're gonna put them all well i can tell you we're having more and more meetings uh using conference calls and conference bridges today than we ever have uh and where it, it's it's odd because many times when you're sitting through uh spending large sums of money people want to sit down and talk about it uh but just getting to a meeting if you're having five or six people today uh many times the client will say well let's try to do it on a conference call it's amazing. Well, if you can, why not? You know, it makes a, it makes a whole lot of sense. I would absolutely agree. And, you, you know, one one of the things you know we tell everybody is, you know, you, you look you look in Houston, you see all the diversity that's coming in. You know, we talked about a lot of different businesses. Are you seeing a lot of international business coming in as well, or is it mostly domestics that's relocating, especially because of oil and gas and healthcare, et cetera? It's it's international. Uh, we're working right now with an international firm to buy an office warehouse and about two or three acres. Uh, it's the second uh, time we've worked with this group and just finished a transaction very similar to it, and they're back doing it again. So we're seeing people come in from all over the country. Yeah, I'm loving it. It's it's yeah. it's really amazing. Yeah, you always can say, God bless that we're in Houston, Texas. Let's face it. It's, right. it, it, it's happening in this country. It's happening here. Absolutely. I would have greatest agree. nation on the earth. Uh, yeah, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely the greatest nation. We call ourselves a state so that we don't offend the other states. So, I, I talk a little bit about your service. Like I know you you do a high high level of service to your clients. I know you help them not only locate the space, but you help them uh, figure out how to get things built out and things like that. Talk a little bit about what you do for them. Well, typically uh, um, our industry is many times a transaction-driven industry. The broker's job is to put the deal together, uh, get the project signed, and then go to the next project. We typically try to stay with the tenant through the entire project. We're not in the construction business, but we work with general contractors every day. We work with architects every day. So uh, our industry is somewhat dysfunctional because there are probably seven or eight different pieces that go into real estate is dysfunctional. Like, I'm just <laughs> totally shocked. Never heard that, that before. <laughs> and so we try to you stay. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> did I, I didn't say I was dysfunctional, did I? No. But, uh, but it helps. But yeah. but uh, we try to stay with the uh, the client all the way through uh, to try to not actually do the construction, not do the architectural work, not do the MEP, but to uh, help them understand yeah. the process because it is a logistical nightmare, yeah. and. Um, and we just don't yeah, leave MEP them. out there for those who don't know. It's mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. So that's right. what you understand. We use a lot of acronyms in this business. And, yep. a, lot of, and a lot of times consumers go, what? <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of moving pieces. It's a, lot, it's of a moving lot of pieces, moving pieces. And it's money that many times a, uh, a tenant especially doesn't understand, doesn't really want to understand it. They do it maybe four or five times in their career, depending on you know if they stay in the same position. So it's uh, it's a little unique maze. And uh, we try to help them work through the uh, maze, do, represent their and, interest. You do an well, awesome job. Well, and you know, a, a lot of those moving pieces involve us having to take a break, actually. I know. You know, time flies when you're having fun. The first 15 minutes are away. We still have 45 more minutes to go to talk about some great things going on in Houston. 
specifically around commercial real estate. Stay tuned. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. Is the back? Immovable object like me. You can bet as sure as you live. Something's gotta give, something's gotta give, something's gotta give. <laughs> 